Hello guys and welcome to my review of the Bose Quiet Control 30. These are the noise canceling neckband earbuds from the company's offering. Our first up I'm going to show you how the box looks. This is how it looks in the front. Pretty clean image of the product itself. On the side you just have the Bose logo and on the back side you have just a rundown of some of the fundamental features. Pause the video here to get a better look. All right, I'm going to quickly show you guys what's inside the box. It's a pretty nice presentation. As you can see here, it shows you some more information on the product at hand. This side here shows you the, uh, the cool thing about the application, the Bose Control app, which allows you to pair this product with multiple other Bose uh, earbuds, as well as unlocking more features, updating the firmware, basically unlocking the full potential of this product. Underneath here, where you would have the actual neckband earbud nestled, you would have the case inside of this bag here, as well as a booklet here, pretty much a quick start guide, stuff of that nature, important safety instructions. You have your micro USB to USB uh, cable to charge the earbuds. You have a small variant of the Stay Here patented Bose tips. These are really, really good. And you have a large variant. The tip that comes uninstalled is the medium variant, and it should fit the majority of users' ears pretty well. All right, let's get to the product itself. Now, the first category I want to cover is the price. Currently, at the time of this review, you can pick these up for about 299 US dollars. I picked these up personally from Best Buy, and that's the price that I paid for these. Next up, we have the design. And as stated before, this is a neckband based earbud, which basically means that this piece here sits on your neck. And the majority of the components and technology, such as the, uh, the battery, the Bluetooth receiver, uh, things of that nature, will sit in this neckband piece, which allows the earbuds to uh, have better battery life than those that do not have this neckband piece as well as those that are just truly wireless. The wire then protrudes out of the neckband which then houses the ear pieces that sit inside your ear. Uh, in terms of the durability and the build quality, I found that these are very, very nicely built. These don't really feel like they will break easily under pressure. It's a very nice, sturdy, and rigid feel. Uh, the wires are also fairly thick, as you can see here. It's a very chunky piece of cable that leads to the airpiece, and the airpieces themselves are fairly thick and substantial in their form. On the, uh, the right side, you have the inline controls, which will control your play, pause, uh, your volume up, volume down, as well as activating your voice assistant. And on the side, you have the ability to control the active noise cancellation. You can reduce the amount of active noise cancellation as well as you can raise it to the max so you can be more secluded from your environment. Next up, we have the Comfort. And Bose has been very, very well known for having very comfortable products in the audio spectrum. Uh, these are no uh, exemption. These are very, very comfortable. Uh, despite the very rugged and kind of beefy uh, design language of this product, it is very lightweight and very comfortable to use. Uh, these stay hair tips that Bose calls them are very, very comfortable and allow for a very secure fit while not being very intrusive to the ears. So overall, these are very comfortable, very, very, if I can emphasize the word very anymore I would <laughs> uh, very comfortable next up we have the features and the quiet control 30 are quite feature packed in terms of the ability to adjust the noise canceling which is very good in case you don't really need that uh, last bit of uh, incredible silence like suppose you're in an office environment or in, you're in a library you can reduce the amount of uh, noise canceling to better accommodate to your listening environments this is very helpful so you can be able to hear people while you're listening to music and you're not completely isolated from uh, the rest of the world uh, and other things that this uh, product does have that I do enjoy is essentially I do like the the controls that are on the wire. I feel like it's a bit more easier to access than the controls that are on the uh, neckband themselves. Personally for me, I just find them easier to uh, control. And I do like how you can control the noise canceling from a physical button as well. And when you dive into the application, 
the Bose Connect app. You can pair this with uh, another Bose product to have a multi sound effect, which is also pretty cool. Like suppose if you have someone like a friend or a, uh, a girlfriend, a wife, a husband, things of that nature, and they also have this product, you can beam your music over to uh, both products and have them listen to the same uh, audio output that you're listening to. Now, some phones, if they do support Bluetooth 5.0, support this feature automatically where it can actually stream to two different Bluetooth sources, which is pretty cool. But this allows you to do that even if you don't have Bluetooth 5.0. So it's a pretty cool extra feature that the Quiet Control 30 as well as other Bose products do offer. Uh, next up, we could have the battery life, and this is stated to last up to 10 hours. And for me, I did get that advertised uh, listening endurance, and these pretty much for me last a good week and a half or so, depending on my usage case scenario. I don't really use these for critical listening, so I will use these here and there. And for me, it'll last about a week and a half to two weeks easily on the 10 hour battery life. For more critical listening, I do go towards my uh, over the ear headphones, such as the Bowers and Wilkins PX. But for these, uh, I use these more for casual listening or just wanted to hear some background music and things of that nature. These do a very great job for that. Moving over to the Bluetooth connection and the codex. The codex supported, supported on this product is the uh, standard SBC as well as the AAC. The AAC codec is a superior version of the Bluetooth transmission over SBC. Uh, AAC is now supported on Android devices if they do have Android Oreo. Uh, and AAC has always been supported on uh, iOS devices. Preferably, I would wish they had aptX and aptX HD support, which offers even higher bitrate uh, transmission through the Bluetooth stream than AAC and SBC. But Bose typically has not been known for really putting aptX support in their products. Connection wise and the stability has been very good. I've not really noticed any uh, annoying dropouts that will inherit the ability for you to enjoy this. Uh, these have been pretty rock steady in terms of the the connection integrity when I'm outside in very dense areas where there's probably a lot of interference. These have been very, very good, very rare drops, dropouts, if any. Moving over to the call quality as well as the audio quality. The call quality for these have been pretty excellent. I've not had any issues with people hearing me as well as me hearing other people. These do feature a noise canceling beam array microphone, which is always a excellent thing to offer because this allows the microphone to essentially filter out any background sound so that the other person on the other end of the call can hear you quite clearly. And as a result, these do perform pretty well in that regards. Uh, audio quality. These are good at best, probably more along the lines of uh, okay in terms of my opinion. The main gripe that I have with these is that they just sound quite, uh, how can I really put it into words? They sound quite tinny at times and they can sound quite dynamically uh, constrained. So... It's probably due to the physical size. However, I can't really put it at that because I've heard IEMs uh, that are about this size that can really project a very expansive, powerful, and large sound. However, these can do that at times. They have a very nice, robust bass response and can throw out a very convincing sound stage. But for the most part, I do... Uh, hear these as quite uh, dynamically uh, constrained at times. So starting off with the bass, the bass on these, uh, they sound relatively detailed. They are quite controlled. They're not over exaggerated. They're relatively natural sound in terms of the tonality and in terms of the emphasis in relation to the mid-range. Uh, overall, the level of resolution in the bass can be improved on. It's a pretty decent uh, rendition of resolution. Uh, I do sometimes hear uh, the bass sounding a little bit sloppy, a little bit rubbery, and not uh, focused and, you know, timely with the level of impact. Moving over to the mid-range, the vocals on these, 
if at a very low volume to moderate volume can sound very nice, very natural, very mellow and soothing. But when you crank the volume up a little bit above moderate, these can begin to sound quite tinny and coarse in terms of the uh, tonality in the vocals and instruments in that mid-range uh, frequency. Uh, in terms of resolution in the mid-range, I do find that these can provide pretty good resolution. They have good separation in that uh, field. It doesn't really sound like it's like muffled or... Uh, in other words, cluttered upon one another, it does give uh, instruments a good le level of space and layering and stuff of that nature. It's just that at uh, moderate to higher volumes, the tonality does shift and these can sound quite uh, tinny and coarse. Uh, moving on to the treble response, and I found the treble in these are pretty present. It does allow you to hear uh, very s uh, soft cues and uh, very small harmonic uh, overlays and tones and stuff like that within the very deep depths of the sound. However, in terms of the uh, the tonality, uh, the treble can also pretty much get some improvements there. It could be a little bit more linear. It feels like the treble does have a bit of peaks and uh, valleys in the frequency response. And this basically can be heard where some parts of the treble sound uh, significantly more emphasized than the other while that tone is quite close to one another. So like for example, it feels like the 8 to 9 kilohertz region is a bit emphasized while the 10 to 11 kilohertz region is a bit underemphasized. So being that those frequencies are so close to each other, you can kind of see that one is peaked while one has like a uh, an attenuation that's been done to that frequency response. But overall, these are pretty good for uh, casual listening. These are pretty much, it's probably a bit better than that. They can be good for very, I uh, can say, not that demanding critical listening because these can project some very nice, soothing, mellow uh, presentations in terms of reproducing your music. So, for commuting on like a train or a bus, just get into your work, get in somewhere. These are pretty good for that. They block out a lot of noise. The noise canceling is quite effective on this product. And they do have a very mellow sound when listening at moderate volumes. Thankfully, because of the noise canceling, you can listen at moderate volumes in a loud environment. So if that's your uh, forte, these are pretty good for that regard. So in conclusion, I would recommend these to someone who doesn't really want a over-the-air design because you can get better offerings for this price. So if you do not want an over-the-air design and you do want noise canceling, I highly recommend this product. Uh, it has very good battery life, very stable connection, and it's very good for casual listening and very non-demanding critical listening where it's just you're, you're somewhat focused on the music, but you're not like entirely focused, if I could put it in other words, for that kind of non-demanding critical listening. Um, but overall, these are pretty good. There are better options out there if you don't need the noise canceling. Um, and the battery life of 10 hours isn't a must. If you can deal with a little bit less battery life and no noise cancellation, however, good noise isolation, I would definitely recommend the Bang & Olufsen uh, E8s. Those personally sound better than the Quiet Control 30s. They're about the same price tag at $299 US dollars. And uh, the passive noise isolation with the foam tips are stellar. And those are essentially more discreet. They don't have this giant neck band piece. But the downside to that is that those offer up to only about five hours of listening and uh they yeah that's about it it's about five hours listening battery life is the main drawback in comparison to these so if there's anything that i did not cover about the quiet control 30 from bose feel free to post in the comments below and i will try to answer them to the best of my ability also if there's any other suggestions on what product that you want me to review also post that in the comments below and i'll try to get my hands on those thanks for watching this video review guys later